Well, the most interesting thing is that we're all waiting for the Fed, and I think uh, the Fed eventually will call it whether they put the American, the American economy in recession or not, and how it is going to affect the, the banks, because they're all reliant on the U.S. consumer okay. at the end of the day. I'm going to come back at you straight away, yeah. because you said they were waiting on the Fed. Well, actually, I think the Fed's waiting on the banks now. Actually, mm -hmm. I'd almost turn it on the head, because yeah. we've heard from... Um, the ex-head of the Fed, Yellen, and we're obviously from Jay Powell, who is the current head of the Fed, that actually we think the banks will do a lot of the work for us now with the, the, the tightening liquidity and everyone looking at the money supply situation as well. So, yes, obviously we're looking at the Fed, but are, is the Fed looking at the banks more than the other way around to see what they do next, if you see what I mean? And it's torturous. I was going to say doom loop, but it's not a doom loop. It's a spiral of some description. I think, yeah, it's, it's a spiral in the sense that so the, we're looking at the Fed and the Fed is looking at the bank. And the Fed, you're correct, um, essentially is rising the cost of deposit for the banks. And this eventually there will be a bifurcation between the large banks and the regional banks, the smaller banks. And I think it could result in less uh, loans. And less loans will do the jobs, uh, to your point, will the, the Fed's job easier in the sense that probably will go into a recession, hopefully a mild one in the second half. Can I pick up on provisions? I'm just looking at a terrific uh, report that Reuters has pulled together on the amount of provisioning. If we just think that uh, we had a, an era of uh, some of those provisions reserves being released around the first quarter, second quarter of uh, 2021 or 2022 uh, in some cases. But now, we've, of course, we've got fairly large provisions being built up and Goldman Sachs was one of the banks that really had to ratchet up its provisioning versus the others that have been steadily increasing. What do you make of how much has been set aside, given the scenarios we're talking about, that there's still some downturn coming through the United States? Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very good question. It's, the question is, uh, I think we're going into a credit normalization first, and I think all the reserve releases are passed. And it makes sense because that's all, they, all the banks, they adjust the um, reserving on some quantitative and qualitative uh, elements. And I think also the vast majority is saying that around now 40% is qualitative. So how bad is going to be this uh, upcoming U.S. recession, which has been the most predicted upon? And I think, uh, uh, yeah, we're seeing slowly an increase in reserve, both on the consumer side and on the property side. So construction, commercial real estate, etc. We haven't heard anything yet necessarily from these major banks to spook the market on the back of banking turmoil. I mean, Goldman Sachs looked a little bit choppy in its execution strategy around consumer and what it was managing to achieve in this volatile market period. Others executed fairly well, Bank of America, for instance, but we're not hearing anything just yet that the turmoil is unsettling the banking community. Is there more to come and is that going to come from the small and, and regional lenders still? Yeah, I think so, because that's so the banks, that's so the big six, they are very, I mean, the universal banks, so are very different engines, and when one engine is not working, like, for example, corporate finance and equity capital markets, because we all know there are very little IPOs at the moment, and the market are very choppy, then, of course, so there is more boom from, say, trading, for example. Fixed income has been a good quarter because of the interest rates volatility. Almost all the banks bar Goldman Sachs, also because the expectations are always so high for Goldman in, in FIC. And yes, I mean, that's all. they have the benefit of having different uh, levers they can use. For example, they're losing some of the deposit, but at the same time, they're going more money market funds. And of course, so they're remunerating more on. Uh, money market funds than they, what they pay out to some of the depositors, which of course some of the smaller banks, they don't have this uh, luxury in terms of uh, liabilities.